Well, hello, congregation. Hello, congregation, family and friends, and Bereans. I pray that all was well with you. Uh, welcome to the Sunday broadcast. First of all, I would like to say that this is our first time uh, on this channel on YouTube. And so I welcome all of you who are watching on YouTube. Of course, we're continuing our broadcast on Facebook Live as we have been doing for years now. To be. So please excuse me as I look back and forth between these cameras. I got to get used to this new set up. But I thank you for being here for this Sunday broadcast. You know, on Thursday, I was talking about the heart. And I had mentioned to you at that point that God was really leading me to do something else and talk about the heart a little bit more. And so he gave me a passage in Mark chapter 7. If you have your Bibles with you, or if you're taking notes, if you'll open that up till Mark chapter 7, we'll be taking a look at a short passage. I can't possibly go over all of it just in one broadcast. But let me ask you this. How often do you go to the doctor? I actually have a doctor's appointment coming up in about 10 days. I get examined by my doctor every six months because I am diabetic and because I am a little on the older side. So the doctor is watching a few health issues that I have. But isn't it interesting when you go to the doctor, they, they'll look in your eyes and check your ears and they look in your throat and then they take a stethoscope and they listen to your heart, don't they? And they listen. And then he listens to my lungs. And then he checks my joints or whatever else I, that I may be experiencing. He takes my A1C level, which of course, uh, because I'm diabetic, I have to have that done. But it got me to thinking, I hope that you see your doctor on a regular basis. And I realized with the COVID-19, some of the doctors have been closed and, and, and some of our appointments may have been backed off a little bit. But I pray that you are seeing doctors on a regular basis to make sure that you are physically healthy. Make sure that you're mentally okay as well. But when is the last time that you had a spiritual checkup? When is the last time you had a spiritual EKG? When is the last time that you actually looked at your heart, the things that are coming out of you, the things that come out of me, and have an honest, honest discussion among ourselves, with each other? Many of you, you know we talk almost every day. Bereans, we talk all the time, don't we? But when is the last time we actually took stock of our own heart? Well, Jesus addresses the heart quite a few times. And when you look through scripture, the heart is mentioned over and over again. The heart can be a beautiful thing. It's a place of love. It's a place of caring. It's a place of romance. But it can also be a very dark place. It can be a place of evil and blasphemies and all kinds of things. And yes, we have to look at this today because we can't just close our eyes to it and think that everything is lollipops and, and bubblegum. That's not the way life works. That is not the human experience. And so if you're with me, I'm going to be looking at a section in Mark chapter 7 that is entitled The Heart of Man. Now, I can only look at a couple of verses here, but as I tell you all the time, you should read the Bible for yourself and study it for yourself. And so what I'm going to do is read verses 14 down through verse 23, and then we're going to just focus on a couple of those verses. Here we go. Mark chapter 7, beginning in verse 14. After he called the crowd to him again, he began saying to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside the man which can defile him if it goes into him. But the things which proceed out of the man, that's what defiles the man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples questioned him about this parable. And he said to them, Are you so lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the man from the outside cannot defile him? Because it does not go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then is eliminated. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he was saying, that which proceeds out of the man, that is what defiles the man. For from within, now listen, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting, wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. Wow. I could preach on this passage and probably teach on this passage in detail. I can't do that here because this is a sermon. 
But maybe one day I'll do a Bible teaching just on this passage because there's so much here that Jesus is talking about. He's making the distinction, very briefly, that what we take in is not defilement. What we take in is not sinful. Remember, throughout the Old Testament, particularly in Leviticus 11, we read about a list of foods that are clean and unclean. And even Peter, his disciples, when Jesus was teaching this, Peter was yet to learn, and he would learn in Acts chapter 10, when God brought the sheep down with the various animals on it, he would then learn that there was no such thing as clean and unclean. God had abolished all of that. So everything was suddenly clean and available to eat. Well, here Jesus is saying, whatever you're taking in is not what's defiling you. It's not what's making you unclean. It's what's coming out of you. Okay, now Thursday in my message, I quoted Jeremiah 17 verse 9, and you all know what that says, right, Bereans? You should know this one by heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And then verse 10, which I was looking at, said this. God says, I know your heart and I know your mind. So maybe another human being doesn't know your heart, but I know it. God knows everything that's inside of us. Now, let me share this with you that when Jesus is talking about the heart here, he's not talking about the organ that's pumping. He's not talking about a literal heart. What he is talking about is what is inside of us. What, who is Thomas really inside? What is he thinking? What is he feeling? What is bubbling up inside? Not just literally the heart, but the heart meaning the very soul, the very inside of a man, the very inside of who you are. What comes out of your heart, what comes out of your mouth, starts way down to the very essence of who we are. And so we may think, and maybe rightfully so sometimes, oh, she has a good heart, he has a good heart, I'm very generous, uh, and we can put all kinds of accolades on us and say, oh, I'm not a murderer, I'm not an adulterer, I have a good heart. I'm a good person. How many times have you either said that yourself or you've heard somebody say, I'm a good person. That's why I'm going to get to heaven because I'm not an evil person. I've never murdered anyone. I haven't stolen. I'm a good person. That's equating yourself with, I've got a good heart. I'm a good person. God's going to let me into heaven. That's not true because Jesus told us, he just gave us a list here. Now, I cannot go over all of the things here, but I'm going to point out a few of them. A few of them that really convicted me, and hopefully that will convict you as well, because we need to be honest with ourselves. We can't just close our eyes and make sure that we're okay physically and mentally and not deal with our spiritual life. Jesus is very serious about what he's talking about here, and so I want us, you and me both, to have a checklist. I want us to look at this and as we go through this, and I make a comment on a few of them, I want you to be honest with yourself as to whether you fall into this category, whether you are suffering with this sin, or whether it's something that you've overcome. Now, there may be some that we go through here, and you may say, no, that doesn't apply to me at all. That's fine. Jesus didn't say that all of these apply to every person. What he said here in verse 23 is all these evil things are what come within and defile the man. He's using that, not a specific man, he's using that mankind, womankind, is what he's talking about here. And so we're going to be honest with ourselves. We need to take a few minutes and look at this checklist. We need to take a few minutes and say, God, yeah, I'm falling down here. Yes, there's something here. And maybe I can give you a few ideas, a few thoughts that maybe you hadn't considered before. So let's go back to what verse 20 says. He says, that which proceeds out of the man, that's what defiles the man. We have to understand what defilement, or what does the word defile mean? It means to be unclean before God. It means to be in a sinful state. It means to not be in, in, in a in a place of righteousness. We are defiled. We're dirty. There's something wrong. And Jesus is saying, if these things are flowing out of you, it's automatically defiling you. And I, I, I defy anybody who's watching this, any of you, including myself, to say that we've never done these things on the list. Because I've done them, many of them, not all of them, and you have too. So let's get real, okay? Let's have a spiritual EKG right now. 
Let's start looking at this. Verse 21. For from within, remember, that's the inside person, out of the heart of men, that's mankind, men, you notice plural, proceed, here we go, evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Let's talk about that for a minute. Evil thoughts. You can't tell me, and I'm not telling you, that you've never had an evil thought. That you didn't have some kind of hatred against someone. Or you had an improper thought. You had an evil thought. The first thing that Jesus mentions before any of the rest of this is our thoughts. Because what we think about very often is what comes out of our mouth. What we think about is very often what we, how we act and what we do. It's what we think about. It's what we focus on. And so the very first thing that Jesus tells us here is the very first thing we have to be careful of if we're doing our spiritual EKG is evil thoughts. Now I'm just going to let that sit right there and let you all decide and think about your evil thoughts and some of the things that you've said and thought about that you had to repent of. Because I've had plenty of them. 36 years as a Christian, I still have evil thoughts. You know why? Because the devil is constantly trying to attack. Those of you who know me, those of you I've reached out for prayer, those I pray for, and those who pray for me, you know that I've been under spiritual attack, and I still am. The devil is always trying to put evil thoughts, wicked thoughts in my head, and I've got to constantly push them away. Look at the next thing here. He says evil thoughts, and then he says fornications. Let me tell you, if you are intimate, if you are having sex with someone who is not your legally married wife or husband, and you're being intimate, you are fornicating. Let's just get that right out there. You know me. I don't mince words. If you are sleeping with someone who is not your legal spouse, you are fornicating. Is that on your checklist? Is that something that you need to clean up in your life? Is that something that you're doing that you need to stop? Because Jesus said, this is defiling you. Look at the next one. Thefts. Oh, I hear you already. I have, I've never stolen anything. I've never gone into a store. You know that I try to be as transparent as possible. Because the only way that you can start trusting me, and the only way that you can get to know me, is if I share things that happen in my life. When I was young, I shoplifted a few times and got caught. Fortunately, by the grace of God, I don't have a record, but I sure learned my lesson. But let me, let me say this, because you may say, well, I've never shoplifted before. I've never gone in and put on Nike sneakers and off I go out of the store. No, I'm not a thief. How about this? You ever show up late for work? You're 10 or 15 minutes late in the morning. If you don't stay 10 or 15 minutes after your work day, then you thieved, you stole something from your employer. You ever think of thieving that way? If you have a 30 minute lunch time and you take 45 minutes and you don't make up that time, you stole or were guilty of theft of 15 minutes of work time. You may be saying, oh, Thomas, that's just, you're splitting hairs. Am I really? See, if you can cheat, if you can thieve in little ways, what else can you thieve with? If you, if you don't report all of your income on your taxes, you have cheated the government. You have, you have created theft. You see what I mean? I'm not talking about things where you're writing a bum check and you're cashing a check that didn't belong to you and therefore, you know, you're a thief. It can be little things be little tiny things. Let's put that on our checklist. Is that something we need to clean up? He says murders. Oh, I've never murdered anyone. I've never murdered anyone either. Have I been mad enough where I just wanted to strangle someone? Yes. Just recently, as a matter of fact. And I had to repent for that. So we may say, okay, well, I've never committed murders. Here's the next one. Adulteries. Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I hear you now. I've been loyal to my wife. I've been loyal to my husband. Ever since I got married, I've never had an adulterous affair or anything like that. No, maybe you haven't. But Jesus told us what in the Sermon on the Mount? Men, if you even look upon a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery already. See, the thought is there. The inside. Mankind. I see a beautiful woman. I see her, I can appreciate her beauty, but then I take it one step too far. What do I do? I start lusting after her. Just like that, I've committed adultery. 
I don't have to sleep in somebody else's bed to commit adultery. And ladies, let me tell you, it works the same for you. If you're looking at a man and you can appreciate his handsomeness or whatever, but you start wondering what it would be like to be with that man, you have committed adultery. See how easy it is for us to fall into these lists. We're, we're in such denial sometimes. We deny these things and say, well, wait a minute, I'm not an adulterer. I'm loyal in my marriage and I'm not a thief. I've never written a bad check or, well, are we starting to see what Jesus is talking about? Even in the smallest little areas, we have to be accountable. So Jesus right now, it's like he, got, he has a spiritual stethoscope up to our heart and our chest. How is our heart beating? Is, is he finding a heart that's pure for God? That's living a life of holiness and righteousness and God-fearing and God-honoring? Or is he checking our insides and seeing that it's ugly and full of sin, full of unrepentance, full of rebellion? Shall we keep going? I know this is not the happiest message, but we need to hear this. Look at the next thing. Deeds or thoughts of coveting. You ever wonder about your neighbor and wish you had that big house? Or wish you had that job that paid six figures? Or wanted that big beautiful car? And you weren't satisfied with where you were in life. You wanted what your neighbor has. Or what your cousin has. You're coveting. You ever see somebody else's spouse and say, I want her. Not only did you commit adultery, you're coveting. That's one of the Ten Commandments. That's a no-no. Coveting. And then it says wickedness, also known as blasphemies. I'm not wicked. I'm not a wicked person. I'm a good person. Sure. And I'm a good person too, in my own mind. But in the mind of God, I'm not a good person. Because the Bible says and tells us in Romans chapter 3, there is no one good, no, not one. There is not one person that seeks after God. Not one. Not one person. None of us on our own will seek after God. If you and I had our way and God was not drawing us to him, every single one of us would be on the fast track to hell. Jesus told us that no one comes to him except the Father draws him. God the Father draws us towards our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you and I were left on our own, we would be blaspheming. We would be living lives of wickedness. We would not want to repent. We'd want to live however we live. And guess who lives that way? The world. The world who doesn't have Jesus. The world who has rejected the Bible. The world who has rejected Christ as Lord and Savior. They're living however they want. They're often living there, to quote a phrase which is really poor, their best life now. This is not the best life now. Eternity in heaven with Christ is the best life now. Look at the next thing. Not only do we have that, then it says deceit, sensuality, envy, slander. I am envy? Yes, we've all been envious. We've all been envious of somebody else's position, somebody else's spouse. Maybe you have friends that have children. You always wanted children. But God didn't bless you with any. You're envious of those girlfriends that have a family. Maybe you wanted a spouse. And God hasn't seen fit to give you one. And you're envious. You're envious. You can't help it. You say it's a human emotion. Yes, it's a human emotion. We need to temper that. We need to temper that. There's one thing to admire someone. It's another thing to be envious of someone. Because look what else he says here, not just envious, talks about slander. You ever say something bad about someone that wasn't true? You slandered them. You ever make up a story? Do you ever get involved in gossip? And Jesus talks about that too throughout the Gospels. You ever wonder why Jesus talks about that? We're not supposed to be gossiping. You hear a story about someone. You hear a story and the next thing you know, you're telling it to someone else. And then they're telling it to someone else. And by the time it gets back around to you, it sounds nothing like the way it started. You participated in gossip, and very often it leads to slander. What you believe about someone turns out that when it comes back around, that person is not the person that you were talking about. You participated in slander. People get sued. 
because they slander others. Or they have libel suits. You can't just go around saying whatever you want to say and making up things about other people. Jesus is saying that's coming from within. All of that's coming out of you. And so we have to be careful what we say, what we think, what we do, because it all starts right in here, deep down inside. It starts right in here, deep down inside. Look at this next one. None of us are not guilty of this one. Pride. Do I need to say anything about pride? Do I need to say anything about pride? Pride is what started the whole problem going on in the Garden of Eden all the way down. Pride leads. The love of money is not only the root of all evil, but it's the root of all pride. Power positions. Doing better than your neighbors. I'm not talking about in a wholesome way. I'm talking about crushing them on the way up the ladder. Eve and Adam fell in the Garden of Eden because of pride. Because they, because the devil tempted them and said, you could be just like God, you know, good and evil. All you got to do is do this. Just do the one thing he told you not to do. And after he muddled Eve's head and they ate of the fruit and they fell, yeah, their eyes were open. But it all started from pride. Remember, it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the boastful pride of life. None of us, come on, let's, let's do our checklist here. All of us have pride issues, whatever they are. And what Jesus is, is, is telling us today, what he's challenging us today is to look through this list and determine which of these areas we need to clean up because he's listening He's got his ear to our chest. He's conducting a spiritual EKG on us. And he's listening for everything that we're saying, everything that we're doing, all of our actions, all of our responses to things. The last thing he says here is foolishness. Just foolishness. Just foolishness. In, in the Jeremiah 17 passage, and we were looking at this on Thursday, we were talking about they had three categories of foolishness. Number one was foolishness of believing man over God. That was foolish. And the second foolishness was believing our hearts over God's heart. And the third was putting all of our trust into material and monetary things and not into godly and spiritual things. Three levels of foolishness. Well, Jesus says here again, foolishness is one of those evil things that come out of you. And he says here in verse 23, all these evil things. He says evil again, not good things, not semi-good things, evil, evil things, bad things, unacceptable things to God. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man, defile the woman. You getting uncomfortable? Are you uncomfortable today because... Jesus gave us a list. Imagine what the disciples were thinking as God was saying to him. You know, in the, in, the, in the earlier passage in verse 14, you know, Jesus, it says he calls the crowd to him. So what happened was there were believers, his disciples, as well as unbelievers, the crowd. And what he did was he gave them a principle and said, it's not what you take in, it's what comes out. And then Jesus dismisses the crowd and his disciples pull him aside as we saw in the passage and they said, can you please explain this to us? How many times in the Gospels do we see that where Jesus will say something, he will teach something and the apostles, the disciples don't get it. And they have to go to Jesus privately and say, can you explain to us what it is that you just said? Well, we should be doing the same thing. We should be making sure that whatever Jesus is teaching, that you and I understand it to the very best of our ability. Obviously, we need to count on the Holy Spirit to enlighten us as we continue studying Scripture, as we marry Scripture with Scripture, passage with passage, as we look at all of the passages that talk about the same thing and pull it together and see what it is that God is truly saying to us. The only way to have Bible truth, Bereans, you know that, is to search the Scriptures every day and make sure what you're hearing is true. That's the way it works. And so... As I've challenged myself these last couple of days, as I've been working through this passage, God has been convicting me of some things on this list that I need to clean up in my own life. And while I'll be going to the doctor in about 10 days for my physical checkup, 
I'm already in the midst of a spiritual checkup right now because God is convicting me already. Jesus is convicting me already just looking at this list. And some of the things, you, you, you people know what I'm talking about. Some of the events that have happened in the last few weeks have not been the most happy times. They've been rough times. They've been challenging times. Uh, they, they've been, it, this is a time of renewal. This is a time of moving on and doing something new for the Lord, something different. I'm on a learning curve, huge. But in the meantime, I also have to contend with this list. Because whether I'm saved 36 years, and I am, the old Thomas, the, the inside Thomas, because I still have a sinful nature, and so do you. We still have bodies that lust after sin. We still have minds that conceive evil thoughts. The only thing that is saved right now with us is our souls. My soul is eternal right now. I have eternal life. And if you are truly saved, you have eternal life right now. But our bodies continue to age and get old and decay and get sick and eventually we pass. Our minds continue to deteriorate. Our skills and our, and, and our overall healthiness and our organs start shutting down. All these things start happening. But the soul lives on forever. We have an eternal soul. But in the meantime, we still live on an earth among many unsaved people. And we are supposed to live a God-glorifying, Christ-like life. And this checklist here is a great start to see what Jesus says is unacceptable. The things that come out of us, unacceptable. Jesus is not going to tolerate it. Jesus is listening to your spiritual heart right now. He's got his stethoscope against your chest right now. What's he hearing? What's he seeing? What's he feeling? What does he see you reacting to? Go back over this list. Be honest with yourself. Go over this list. Go over this list. And every single one of them that you have an issue with, that you realize you've fallen into sin, Today is the day to repent. Today is the day to come clean before God. Today is the day to confess all this to Jesus and say, Jesus, forgive me for being envious, for being deceitful, for slandering that person, for taking that extra long lunch and I shouldn't have and didn't make up for it. Forgive me for those times that I'm a little lazy and I'm not doing a good day's work for a good day's pay. Forgive me, Lord, for those times that I have those evil thoughts Forgive me, Lord, for that time that I looked at that person and not only did I want them, but I was lusting after them. You committed adultery. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for all of these things that I'm doing. Turn my heart. Get these evil thoughts, these evil desires, all of these things that defile me out of my system. Help me deal with them, Lord. Help me get rid of them. Deliver me from them. I don't want to be defiled. I don't want to be unclean before you. I, I don't want to be ashamed. I don't want you to look at me, Jesus, and, 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 and be ashamed of me. We have work to do. You have work to do. So do I. I've begun my work. I'm praying that this message will motivate you to do your work. Get that spiritual stethoscope. Put it up against your own heart. Put it up against your own inside. And be honest with yourself. Where on this list have you fallen down recently and where do you need to repent? And let me just say this to you in closing. Before the end of today, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on a replay, wherever you're watching this, before the end of your day, make sure that you confess all of this to God. Make sure it, it, you are clear before God. Make sure you have confessed all of this. You don't want to lay your head down at night with these things still over your head. None of us are guaranteed another day. We're here today. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed another breath if we really think about it. We don't know where we're going to be five minutes from now, if we're going to still be alive or not. Don't, don't put this off. Be honest. If I've made you uncomfortable today, that was not my direct intention, but if I have, that means I've gotten through to you. That means this message reached you. Isaiah 55.11 tells us, that God's word does not return void. It reaches all those people he intends it to reach. So if it reached you today, if this message meant something for you today, if you're convicted, even if you're mad at me, 
It's okay. God's word got out. And God's word always reaches those people he intends it to reach. So all I ask you to do is whatever platform you're watching me on, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel here, please do share the channel with others because we're brand new on this side as we've moved away from Periscope and onto YouTube. Facebook, you can share this message out. You hear me say it all the time because this is the word of God going out. It's not for my glorification. It's not for yours. It's for the word of God going out that will help somebody. Bereans, you all know, you're probably tired of me saying it, but you never know when someone new is tuning in. Acts 17.11 tells us that the Bereans were more noble than all others. They weren't nicer looking. They didn't have more advantages. Here's what they did. If you read about it, the Bible says that they received the word of God from Paul and Silas with all eagerness, with all readiness. They were ready to hear the word, but they didn't stop there. Because none of us can just stop hearing the word. If you just stop what I've said to you, and you've heard the word, and you say, that's it, and you close your Bible, and off you go. No. The Bereans search the scriptures every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Daily. Every day. I can't say it enough. They searched the scriptures to make sure what they were hearing was true. You should do the same thing. I need to do the same thing. doesn't matter if you listen to me, someone on uh, Christian television, you hear someone on Christian radio, uh, the internet somewhere, anywhere on social media, and there's a ton of people out here preaching and teaching. doesn't matter if you're reading the latest bestseller from your favorite author. You must study the scriptures for yourself and make sure what you're hearing is true. Because honestly, there's a lot of things being taught and preached that aren't true. Not true at all. You don't want to get caught up in false teaching. You don't want to get caught up under a false prophet. Be a diligent Berean. And lastly, I thank all of you who have been praying for me. Many of you I talk to uh, on a regular basis, whether it's over on Twitter, here on Facebook, uh, wherever we talk, direct message, messenger, wherever we're talking, we talk a lot, don't we? And I want you to know, I want you to hear it right from me because I say it to you when I type it in. But I want you to know that I truly appreciate every single prayer every prayer that you pray for me and for this ministry. We are at a crossroads right now. We are at a point where there is zero income right now. Zero. This is a walk of faith. This always has been. There was a salary coming in. Those of you who know the story, there is zero right now. That's not your burden. But it's something I know God can fix. But thank you for praying for me in this ministry. Please pray that I stay unwavering, on the front lines. I'm a guy who gets a little loud. I'm from Philly. Okay? We get loud. We say what's on our mind. I want to be the kind of preacher that stays on the front line. No quit, no backup, no retreat. I'm not going away. Satan can do whatever he wants to do because the God that lives within me, the Holy Spirit, is greater than him who is in the world, and that's Satan. Satan is already defeated, but boy, he can sure make things awfully difficult. And right now, this ministry is going through a transition right now. Not just with changing platforms here, but we have some other things that are happening that hopefully you'll be excited about that I know as we're on a learning curve here, we're going to be sharing that with you. So please keep the prayers coming. Lastly.